What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Decoded. It is April 1st, 2024, April Fool's Day. Although nobody said that once to me today, I guess that's just fading away with the rest of everything. Anyway, uh, today was an interesting day. Uh, we had nice moves to the downside. We had nice moves to the upside. We were able to find good, clean trades on both of them. And then um, we're going to talk about them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and launch the chart and see what's a happening. Uh, our pre-market range was pretty tight leading into the open, and um, as per usual, we have we had no reports actually today to 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 trigger any good moves in pre-market. So we needed to be a little bit patient. But the one thing we talked about alongside call put scenarios are the same things we always talk about, and one of which today was extremely important. We have a put scenario which we were looking for a candle close below 523.45. We touched it. We didn't close below it. We didn't even breach it. Call scenario was a breach of 524.31. Now, you're going to notice that there's an exit circle there. And we're going to talk about why it's there, because why we shouldn't have gotten into calls there, why we could have gotten into calls earlier, many of us did, and we'll go over all that because it's important. Because the other thing I said besides the call put scenario was, guys, whatever's going on, don't play against the cues. If cues are diving down, you're not going to want to be looking to take calls on SPY. If cues are shooting up, you're not going to be wanting to take puts on SPY. Okay? You don't want to play against the cues. It's very, very simple. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but you go back and take a look for most of 2023, all of 2024, and find how many days cues are going in one direction and SPY is going in the other direction, and count those against the number of days that they're going in the same direction. I think you'll find it's a pretty lopsided difference to the side of confluence between the two of them. With that said, what are we looking for if the put scenario is going to play out. We want to see cues selling off. We want to make sure that we get through this line and we'd like to make sure cues are not on a level of support. Well, if you go over and look at the cues chart for this morning, yes, we had a nice red candle. It couldn't move any lower. It didn't get below its pre-market low. In fact, we printed green finding support there and then we started to rocket ship up. So right off the bat, puts were not a thing. Okay, now, when, when we talked about this before the market opened, guys, if Q's find support down here and they break above 445.44, this thing's going to move to the upside. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to tell you to buy calls. I can't tell you to buy calls. I'm not going to tell you to buy puts. I am not allowed to tell you when to buy and when to sell. What I can tell you, though, is what I think is going to happen in the event that certain other things happen. So if Qs break above 445.44, I believe the Qs will continue to run. Follow that up with the fact that I suggested not to play against the Qs. You want to go with them. Put two and two together, folks. Okay. If you didn't take the trade because you didn't feel comfortable taking the trade, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But... When we talk about this stuff, these are the things you're looking for. Now, the one weird part about trading based on the cues, well, there's two. Number one, Jimmy, if you just watched the cues so much, why don't you just trade the cues? Let me answer this question for everybody because I answer it daily. The reason I don't switch to trading the cues is several. Number one, I have a lot of futures traders in my group. They listen to what I'm saying and talking about on SPY because what happens in SPY happens in future. So those people get to play the futures while listening to me commentate the SPY chart. Number two, SPY has SPX, which is my tool of choice, my choice of leverage to play SPY. I am aware that the Qs have NDX. The problem is the liquidity is not the same. Okay, so I prefer SPX. All right, the cues are wildly important to me and how I trade, okay? And that's only because, and it won't be the case forever, it wasn't the case prior to the, to the big seven talking about AI, right? But things change, right? 
It's an ever-changing landscape. So I'm not going to switch to trading the Qs. Yes, I could probably just watch one chart and make a lot of money trading the Qs. The problem is my community is based on SPY. So I have SPY traders and futures traders, which rely on my commentary based on SPY. I'm not deviating away from that. Plus, I trade SPX, which is, again, my tool of choice, and I'm not deviating from that either. So I will continue to use the Qs for as long as they're dragging SPY around as my reasoning for a lot of the trades that we take. In fact, I believe every trade we took today was based on the Qs. However, I will say this, you can use my style of trading, which is just support resistance coupled with price action to trade anything that you want. It works, just don't use it on penny stocks, okay? It works on everything, Nvidia, Apple, Meta, Spy, Qs, it doesn't matter. Pick your poison, okay? So we get in because Qs break or breach that resistance, looking for a strong move to the upside. Awesome, we get in because Qs broke resistance, looking for a strong move to the upside. Now, we are clearly trending up on Spy at this point, okay? And we are waiting for something to stop the move going up. Well, we hit our fourth line of resistance up on cues. It starts to struggle. Okay, now I personally remind everybody when we get to these lines to each one, guys, cues are at resistance. You might want to consider taking profits. If you want to stay in the trade, simply move your stops up so that you break even if it rejects this line and heads down. Simple as that. If you want to hold on to it, hoping for more, there's nothing wrong with that. Just protect yourself in the event that it doesn't move up more. Simple. We move up to... And then we start rejecting and holding, okay? We pull back, we get back up. This is my time to get out. I'm not interested in holding out to see how many candles we can get away with rejecting here before I start to worry about it, not being able to make it through. So me personally, getting out here, plus we had reports coming up at 945, you don't really wanna hold through those, okay? So you get out when it's right for you, okay? That ended up being about a 34.5% win, okay? now. When would I play puts? Well, I needed to see a very specific thing happen. Number one, we needed to start putting in lower highs and lower lows on SPY, at least breaking this uptrend line, which we did. That happened pretty soon. Should I jump into puts here? I wouldn't. Well, why not, Jimmy? Because I want cues to give up this resistance first. They need to break levels of resistance before I trust puts. Not SPY. SPY is already starting to, to break down. No. I want to know the thing that brought SPY up in the first place is no longer moving up. So it's struggling to move up here, but it's also finding support right here. So you had confluence in several occasions here. Number one, I had an alert set at 446.47. This level of support, because it's the first level of support that we found on the way up. We tried to move back from here, couldn't, and went up. I know that buyers are going to be sitting there, and if we can get through that level, my thought is that we'll make it down to the next level of support based on th the lines, or all the way down here is really what we were hoping for, okay? Because if you go from support to proven support, it's all the way down here, okay? So we broke resistance here, this one, that's good. Some more buyers turning into sellers. We closed below a line of support here, that's good. We retested it as resistance. That's good. We broke this support. That's good. All things that would let you know that the market at the time or the buyers at this level are starting to get weaker. This might be the start of Q's reversing down. Well, that happens to be on this candle. Now, what we want to see is the Q's. We get in because of the Q's. We're hoping the Q's make it all the way down to at least this line. Okay. But the real support level from level to level is all the way down here. And you can see, ultimately, we do get down there and slightly below it. Now, we break down. We pull back. This level of resistance, proven on the day, support rather, needs to hold as resistance. If it doesn't, you better get out of this trade. Okay? We had a lot of people just jump in on this candle here because it broke support. And they got out during this candle. I did not. I actually got in on this candle, 
stayed below resistance and got out because my original target was to our first line of line, our first line down below the support. Okay. Now I myself took myself out when we got down in here. Okay. We had a lot of people hold that trade. We had people get out earlier. You know, there's there's all kinds of reasons. It's really up to you. This trade here ended up being a 47% winner. Uh, but you did have to hold through a bit of a pullback, which is slightly uncomfortable. All right. So that that one there was a little sketchy feeling because of the pullback. But support and resistance did its job. Old support turned into resistance, pushed us down lower. It was a great trade. Okay, and it continued down much, much lower, left a whole bunch of money on the table, but I don't care because it was already up a good amount of money at that point. Anyway, we uh, we continue to move down. We get down to the pink line. That's why this line's here. Okay, we get within five cents of these lines. I don't like to play games. I don't like to mess around. Uh, we continue to sell off, sell off, sell off. Now, what happens here? Well, again, on the cues, it starts with SPY closing below support. You could have gotten aggressive because of this looking for the next line down during a downtrend. Guys, it's very simple. The way I look at it is I wanna see a trend in the market clearly down at this point. I wanna see us close below a line of support because then I expect SPY to move down to the next support. I want to see cues supporting my thought process. That's it. I'm looking for cues for confluence. SPY starts the, the thought process for the trade. Cues seals the deal for me. Okay, so if we're coming down to support here, okay, at 11.15, and cues are on support, I don't want to touch that trade, okay? So right here at 11.13, SPY had broken support, cues was still holding a support line. So the smart thing to do, or conservative thing to do, is wait for cues to breach that line, expecting it to move down to the next line, just like SPY. So some people got in ignoring cues being on support because SPY broke. Some people waited because until cues broke, whichever case, they both paid. Okay, you get in here at 1115, you play it until cues hit their, their next line down or five cents off of it, the five cent rule. We get that at 1121. Enter here, exit here. Okay. I need to reiterate this as well, guys. So I ended up getting in here at 11.13 and I got out when SPY got to its support. So I didn't get the couple of extra bucks down here. That ended up being a 52.8% win. Okay, that was my third and final trade for the day. All to the, um, two to the downside, one to the upside. Now, just because I'm no longer trading doesn't mean that there's not other things to find to do, okay? We get down, we come down to support, we pull back, holding resistance, we come back down. Now, again, based on the cues at 11.51, cues are pulling back. What do we say? Make sure that the cues are below this most recent support. Okay, we're still looking for puts because we're putting in lower highs. Okay, yes, this is a higher low. So essentially, you can call it a wedge, whatever you want to do. Right? There's many different ways to skin a cat. So you could say it's a wedge right? But the trend of the day at this particular time is a downtrend, okay? So you could play it with the break of the wedge to the downside, or you can wait for cues to close below the support that was clearly here at 443.89 as double bottom, double bottom, double bottom. First candle that closes below, it happens to be the same candle that breaks the wedge to the downside. There's your entry candle. Well, Jimmy, where are we looking for it to go? Well, to the next line down, just like it did over here. Okay, so you get in at 11.51. Next line down was here. And like always, if you intend on holding these trades, all I can ask you to do is move your stop loss down. If you wanted to wait for the actual touch of the line, here you go at 11.59. You could have got out at 11.54. You could have got out at 11.59 to each their own. Okay, whatever the thing is. But again, nice, easy, clean trade. Okay, all based on the cues. Then we find support. We start putting in higher lows, higher highs. Wouldn't buy calls. Um, I think my call line was, where was calls? I think I based it on the cues. I think I said I wouldn't buy calls unless we got back above, oh, the pre-market levels, 444.24. If cues weren't above those lines, I had no interest in calls, none. Plus we're in the, in the seller side of the market. That's what this red green box is. 
Okay. And um, so we start trending up. We break. Now, I had people up here during this trend saying, Jimmy, I want to buy puts. I want to buy puts. I said, guys, do what you want. But at least, at least wait for the uptrend to, to, to end. Now, I know we're not trending up on the day, guys. We're trading minutes at a time. Okay. So what is happening here? Yes, plays in the context of the overall weight of the market. But if you're taking trades that you don't hold through you know, this long of time, this matters, okay? When we start putting in higher lows and higher highs, you gotta understand that that's not good. It's not a good sign or a situation for puts. So if you're gonna play puts because the market's on the heavier side, at least wait for that uptrend to stop. Okay, give it, give it a second. Wait for the trend to break, at least. Okay, and then when we do break it, know where your next support level down is, which in this case, we were talking about it. I wouldn't buy puts just because we break the trend line because you're going to run right into support on the yellow line below it. What I would do if I were you, because I'm done trading for the day, is wait for the cues to get below this level of support right here. Okay, I believe that we entered another one at 106. Yeah, wait. And this was right before I went to lunch. I said, guys, if we get a candle close below 106 on the, or below this support on the queues, okay, which we get at 106, we should move down to first would be the orange line, followed by the move down to here. And then if we get through that, we'd be looking for the next orange line. Now I'm not here during this trade to, to navigate people through it, but you got your entry at 106. The very first support it came down to would have got you out here. That was a 19% win, by the way, and ask me how I know that. I'm glad you asked. I know that because we had a whole bunch of people take that trade and they made 19 to 20%. That's not bad. All you had to do is be patient, wait for the right reason. Now, we also had those same people hold on, move their stops down to break even because the queues never got back up above where they the reason for getting in, which was 444.20. That was the line we needed to break. Stayed comfortably below that, chopped on a line of support there for a minute, and then broke down. Guys, just follow the just follow the support levels on the way down. We went from here to here. Okay, it tried to find support there on a couple candles, turned it into resistance. Then it wants to go down to the next support, and we didn't quite make it there, but just a few cents off of it. And then you take profits or you don't, or you stop out when it starts to pull away. Up to you, okay? Now I'm at lunch this whole time, and then we come back to lunch or from lunch. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and there was nothing else to change because after that, I go pick up my kids from school. So I ended up leaving at 2.45, and we were talking about a whole bunch of things at this point. Guys, calls were not in the cards today. The market uh, the market was pretty heavy. We spent most of our day in the, in the seller side of the market, uh, this red area down here. Um, Q's never got back above their pre-market range until the last couple of minutes of the day. And uh, yeah, and at this point, you should have made a fair amount of money in this clean move up or down. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Uh, but what you don't want to do is get into trades for no good reason. Okay, there's, there's, there's should always be more than one reason to get into a trade. And one of those reasons should never be because I feel like it's going to drop. Wait for the chart to prove you right. Sometimes that means you're going to miss a good trade. But it also means that you're allowing probabilities to go in your favor to give you better odds of winning. This is important. Okay? You get a lot more leniency if you get in way up here and then you get down here and you want to say, "Oh, maybe this will go lower." Fine, you can afford to do that because you're up so much, okay? I personally don't trade that style of trading. There are plenty of people out there that trade much higher time frames that allow them to catch moves like this. I don't care. What's more important to me is consistent wins instead of bigger wins, okay? That's just the way I prefer to trade. So for those of you who watch these videos, I am well aware of the fact that I leave a ton of money on the table because I cut myself out of trades. But you know what else I do? I take every trade with confidence and I'm comfortable doing it because that's what's important. 
The minute you hesitate because you're not confident or you're not comfortable is the is the time you're going to you're going to have no plan for your trade. Okay? Like Mike Tyson says, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, if you don't have a plan when you get into the market, the market's going to punch you in the face and you're going to panic or you're going to get knocked out or you're going to you're going to cry home, cry running home and and the market's just going to take full advantage of you. I don't give the market enough opportunity to take advantage of me or my emotions. So I get in at very, very specific spots and I get out at very specific spots. My targets. I'm not interested in trading past my levels unless there's a damn good reason for it. Okay? So no, my trades are not massive, but I don't know anybody out there who wouldn't like a north of 90% win rate having 20% go-tos as your typical return. I mean, that's pretty good money. And if you could do that consistently, there's no reason you can't live off of that money. All right. And if you do get consistent with it, playing smaller position sizes, well, guess what? That same 20% is even bigger when you start to scale up. You don't have to change your trade plan. You don't have to trade longer. You don't have to take more trades. You don't have to hold them longer. Just scale up when you've gotten the consistency that you're looking for. All right. With that, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you all had some uh, a great Easter weekend. Hope you had a great Easter weekend. Enjoyed the time off. Uh, but I also hope you got some uh, useful and valuable information out of this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to join our Discord community, there's a link down below. We'd love to have you. First week is completely free. If you like what you get for that week, consider becoming a paying member. And that's pretty much it. So tomorrow and the rest of this week is going to bring about quite a few reports and Fed speakers. So it could be pretty volatile. Hopefully we get some more move than we did today. Uh, We basically got uh, a $4 range today, $4.50. That's a pretty good day. Um, And uh, we caught caught enough of it to make a good good amount of money. Uh, Our win rate right now in the community, I think, is three to one. So for every, every one red, we have three green traders, which is awesome. That's pretty much it. So till tomorrow, I love you guys. Thanks for watching.